Sandy says read and welcome to the channel. You guys, today we are going to talk about the top 20 ways to read more books while you're on a tight budget. Because you guys, we are all on a tight budget these days. I know it. I know I am, but I'm still looking for ways to bring books into my life. I'm still looking for ways to read more books bring those books to you guys here on the channel, but you guys out there as readers, as subscribers to the Sandy Says Read channel, you guys are also looking for ways to read more books, to listen to more books, etc. We're going to talk about that right now, how to get more books into your life while you're on a, a tight budget. We're going to go over three specific, three specific categories of books in particular. We're going to talk about audiobooks, digital books and print books, as if there are other forms of books, right? But those are the three categories we're going to focus on during this video. Before we get started, we'll do some quick housekeeping. All right. I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel. Please invite your friends to subscribe to the channel too, because here at Sandy Says Read, we are a book channel. We do bookish things. Typically, I'm doing book reviews, booktube tags, and just talking about book stuff. So today, we are going to focus on how to get more books into our lives. We're going to look at the top 20 ways that I have identified for us to get more books into our lives while on a tight budget. Okay, I've said we're going to divide this into three sections. But before we start those sections, I do want to go over one quick little hang up that I have. I just want to get this out of the way. I will put timestamps below. So if you want to skip to the different sections of this, you don't have to listen to me ramble, but I'm going to ramble for a minute. I want to go over a quick little hang up that I have about reselling books. You guys, I don't have a problem with reselling books. All right. What I have a problem with is when a seller misrepresents themselves or misrepresents what they're doing with reselling a book. I'm going to give you an example, an example that you guys might remember if you've been watching the channel for any length of time. Last fall in 2023, I ordered this book, The Water Door by Aggie LJ. I wanted to get this hardcover copy before Aggie and I met at Conjuration. We were going to be sharing a table together and I wanted to have this book so that I could read it beforehand, so I could review it here on the channel for you guys, which I did. And I wanted to have her sign it for me when I got to the table, etc. Right. OK, so I ordered this book off of Amazon.com and I thought that I was ordering it from her publisher, her from her. I thought I was ordering it from Aggie's set up, right? So that Aggie was getting the the proceeds from my purchase. But when it arrived, it was already inscribed to someone. And I realized, no, this was resold. Someone resold this book without making that clear. And I was disappointed because that meant my purchase of this book gave no money to Aggie. The author got nothing from my purchase of this book. And I was disappointed in that. I understand that when you're reselling books, the author's not getting anything from that, that resell. I get it. That happens every day, all the time in different, in different venues, right? I understand that's happening, but it upsets me when the, when the purchaser, when the buyer is not made aware that that's happening. It's just a little, a little hang up that I have. Okay. I, for example, <laughs> We, let's continue with this tirade for just a moment. I mean, for example, we have garage sales out there in the world. Back when I was getting married, um, Idiot Stick and I had a garage sale so that we could raise some money, right, for our honeymoon. I have always been slightly destitute, right? Okay, so we had the garage sale to raise some money for our honeymoon. And we sold CDs and cassette tapes and I'm ancient, CDs and cassette tapes and books. We sold furniture. We sold all kinds of things that we did not need. Other people could then purchase and love and have in their homes. So we sold things like books, but every person walking into that garage to purchase things, my parents' garage, every people walking into my parents' garage to purchase things understood they weren't purchasing something from the original author or from the original musician, right? They understood they were purchasing something and the original author, the original musician, the original carpenter wasn't getting the money. We were. 
it was clear that we were reselling. I just believe that when you're reselling a book, you should make it clear that you are reselling. You are the reseller and you're not giving money to the indie author or the publishing house. Okay, are we ready to dive into the conversation now? <laughs> Okay, so we're dividing this into three sections. Section one, we're going to talk about audiobooks and some ways to get, oh, less expensive or even free audiobooks into our lives. These are not in any particular order. These are just three audiobook platforms that I want to bring to your attention. We're going to start with Libro.fm. I don't personally use Libro.fm. I didn't pay the $14.99 a month to use it. That is the subscription format of Libro.fm. You can use the subscription format. Um, you don't have to be a member though. You don't have to purchase the membership and, and pay that $14.99 a month. You can go to Libro.fm and you can look through the audiobook selections that they have in, in purchase audiobooks without being a member. But membership, membership has its, its privileges, right? If you're a member, then you get to have reduced prices on audiobooks. Now the, um, oh, and also I've got written down here, when you purchase a, an audiobook on Libro.fm, they will send a percentage of that purchase price to a local bookstore of your choice. Like you designate for them, which local bookstore in your community you would like to receive um, points or, or money from your purchase of an audiobook on their platform. And I think that's real nice. I like that. I like that aspect of it. So even though you're spending $14.99 a month to be part of that, that club, that membership, some of your monies are going to local bookstores. And I think that's nice. Number two, Amazon has its Audible subscription. Okay, now Audible has two levels. You can do the $7.99 a month or the Premier membership, which is $14.99. $14.99? $95. $14.95 a month. Okay, now I know that $14.95 a month, and even for Libro, you know, doing $14.99 a month, these are not cheap. Okay, there's not a lot of us who can add another $15 a month for a subscription service somewhere. But if you want to have a bunch of, if you, if you want to have numerous audiobooks available to you every month, then it is less expensive to pay that $14.95. It's less expensive to pay that than to pay $34 for each book you want to listen to. I'm not kidding. And you've probably seen it. If you go onto amazon.com and you look for the audio version of a book, it's going to be pricey. You're looking at $25 for one or $34 for one. I don't know about you, but I can't afford to do that. I just can't. So, you know, having the subscription service for Audible may be a better bet for you if you're after audiobooks. Number three in the audio section, a Chirp. Chirp is one that has no subscription fee. You just sign up tell them that you want to be a member and they say, thanks, welcome. You can curate an email, um, an email blast that you receive from them. You let them know which genres you prefer, which genres you think are most exciting to you. And they will curate that email to come to you. You can select whether you want to get it every day, which is a bit much for me every week. You know, how often you want to receive an email from Chirp they will send you this notice that says, hey, here are some new titles that we have available in these genres that you like. Come check them out. Or here they are right here in the email, whichever way you want to receive this. And you can go to the platform, look at these books. The thing with Chirp is they have titles that are priced at discount prices. So instead of paying $34 for an audiobook, you can find one that's at $4.99. $2.99. They also have um, not buy one, get one. You know, they're not BOGOs, but buy two, get one free. So after you've purchased two audiobooks at $2.99, you can select a third one at $2.99. Okay. This is still not free, but you're getting audiobooks at reduced prices. And if you're one of those folks who has a long commute, if you're spending a lot of time in a car, if you're spending a lot of time doing chores around the house and you want to listen to books while you're doing it, then this might be 
this might be a good option for you. Okay, and those are the only three audio platforms that I'm bringing to you in today's discussion. I want to hear from you guys in the comments below. What are some audiobook platforms or services that you've investigated that you have found to be worthy? I mean, what are some audiobook platforms that you would recommend to the other audience members in the comments below? Share, share the knowledge, share the information. Now, the next section or the next category I want to talk about is digital. We're looking at digital books that are less pricey and possibly even free. And number four is going to be children's books. We're going to focus on children's books specifically, and that is the International Children's Digital Library. Now, this is a website and it's hosted by the University of Maryland. They have set up a website, right? You go to this website and find PDFs of children's books. These are set up for ages three to 13. They're set up in different languages. They're, I checked and I found that there are supposed to be 59 different languages on the site. You guys, I didn't go count. Okay, I didn't verify that. But I've heard there are 59 different languages of books, of stories for kids on the website. And that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, you don't, um, you don't download the books off of the website. You, you read them there on the site, but it's free. You can go and read books for free to your kids. Let your kids read books for free on the um, International Children's Digital Library. Now let's talk about number five and let's look at young adult books. If you go to the Teen Simon website, the Teen Simon app, this is an imprint of Simon & Schuster and they allow you to read on the app or on the website, one free digital book per month. Now there are, there are ways you of course can read other books. You will have to pay for those, but you're allowed one free book per month. And that's very nice. If you're trying to encourage your young adult reader to read more, there is one way to do that. Another, uh, number six, another one that's looking at kids and getting into like young adult and adult books is the Project Gutenberg. Um, Project Gutenberg has ebooks online for free, which is a nice perk. They're all free. Now you do have to um, you look at them on the app, on the Project Gutenberg app, but I mean, there are thousands of them, right? And they're all like classics and books that are in the public domain. So if you want to, if you're trying to encourage your young adult reader to read Greats of Wrath, if you're trying to read you know, any of the classics, if you're trying to get your, your young adult reader into reading, my goodness, Project Gutenberg is there. It's available and it has free books. They're free to read. The platform I want to talk about is number seven, and that is NetGalley. Now, let's take a minute to talk about NetGalley. Yes, it is set up for reviewers to find books from publishers ahead of release date. But that doesn't mean that regular readers out there in the world can't access it. Of course, any reader can access NetGalley. NetGalley also has um, an audio component to it. Um, I want to caution you. Sounds nefarious, doesn't it? I want to caution you about the, the audio aspect of it right now. Of course, it's free. You're not losing any money, but you, you might get frustrated with the audio section of NetGalley. NetGalley Shelf, from what I have heard, I haven't tried it, but from what I have heard, it does have some glitches and some bugs right now. Maybe wait till those are ironed out. Maybe double check it before you go downloading that app and downloading a book and getting halfway into the book and finding that it resets on you. Okay, just, just be aware that there's some glitches. No big deal. It's still free. You're not you're not having to pay for something that glitches. All right. The NetGalley app, the NetGalley setup is set up so that authors and publishers and publicists can put new releases and books that are soon to be released up on this site and make them available for reviewers to, to read and review prior to the release. The point of this is to get um, excitement to get reviews, to get um, promotion, to get energy for the books before the books are released. The publishers want to see 
of course, positivity. The publishers, of course, want to see good reviews. This doesn't mean you have to leave a good review for every book that you read on NetGalley. You don't, you don't have to, you, you want to be honest. Of course you want to be honest in your reviews, but I want to give you this, this advice perhaps, please. When you are looking at books on NetGalley, when you are curating your list of things you want to read on NetGalley, why not pick out books that are in a genre you like? Right. So you are right, track with me here for a minute. If you are going to read and review books on NetGalley, why not read books that are in a genre you know you're going to enjoy? Why would a person go to NetGalley and pick out a book that's in a genre they know they don't like? Like if I I like a lot of genres, but let's pretend that I go to NetGalley and I pick out a book in like hardcore erotica. I don't like hardcore erotica. And so I read this book that's in hardcore erotica. And of course, I'm not going to like it. I'm going to be turned off by it. I'm going to find it unseemly, right? So my review of it is probably going to be negative. My review of it is going to be skewed by my not enjoying the book. I'm going to find fault with that book because I don't enjoy hardcore erotica, okay? That's not great for that new book and that author and that publishing house. I have done a disservice to them by picking a book in a genre I know I don't like. What I should do instead is go to NetGalley and pick a book in fantasy or horror or sci-fi or, or paranormal romance. I should pick a book in one of the many genres that I do enjoy because I can pick that book up and I can read through it and give it a, a better chance at being loved and I can read it more critically. I can read it with an eye for what I know I like in fantasy and what I expect in fantasy and what tropes I know I'm going to be looking for in fantasy, okay? What I'm, what I'm suggesting to you is please use NetGalley properly. <laughs> I mean, maybe I shouldn't use the word properly, but I think you're probably tracking with me here. If you go to NetGalley and you start leaving negative reviews, the publishers will pick up on that. The publishers will uh, put you on a list. Okay. Publishers do have the ability to automatically approve you to receive an ARC. And if they see that you are consistently giving negative reviews to books, they will not automatically approve you for an ARC. When they see that you are a person who often leaves negative reviews, they're not going to want to give you an opportunity to read a book that maybe you're really excited about. So you're going to get you're going to get rejected and you're not going to get to read this new release before everyone else does. Does that make sense? Okay. Moving on, let's talk about Book Sprout. Book Sprout works much the same way as NetGalley. Okay? Publishers, authors, publicists are putting arcs, new releases and even some older books on Book Sprout. They're putting the arc, the digital copy on Book Sprout for reviewers and readers to find and then review and talk about. Um, I have attempted to put an arc on Booksprout. I've never tried to put anything on NetGalley. It it looks overwhelming and overwhelming to me. I have watched I have watched videos of other authors attempting to use NetGalley as a promotion tool, and it is overwhelming and overwhelming. I tried Booksprout a couple of years ago. I tried to put an arc on Booksprout. That was difficult. It was also difficult to get people to recognize, hey, this arc is here. It was difficult to get help from the help center at any part of that process. And I gave up. I decided that was too much work for the money I was going to have to pay to use it. Because as an author or as a publisher, you have to pay to use these platforms. The readers, you guys out there, don't have to pay to use these platforms. We, we, the authors, NetGalley, Booksprout, they want you, the reader, there. So you don't have to pay for it. It's free for you to use these services. Number nine is BookBub. BookBub has daily deals emails that they send out to readers who are using the BookBub platform. This is free. You can go to bookbub.com and you can tell BookBub, hey, I'm a reader and I'm interested in 
fantasy. I'm interested in sci-fi and I'm interested in cozy mysteries. And they will curate a list that sends you a daily deals email that says, hey, these titles are coming up in these genres that you like. This is free. And once you see those titles, you can download those ebooks to your device. Sometimes those books that are coming up are free. Authors are doing daily deals where they have those books for free. They're for, you know, the new releases are free for, you know, a week, for a month, right? So you can jump on those and, and read the book for free. You can download it. You've got the ebook for free, or maybe it's 99 cents for the first week, right? So you're getting those daily deals that are alerting you to these lower priced digital books. Um, BookBub also has number 10. BookBub also has new releases for less. Now this, this email or um, e-blast is going out to the site and letting people know about upcoming releases that are not as pricey as the print book that you're finding out online, that you're finding out the bookstores. There, this, this um, concept, this aspect of BookBub is letting you know that these eBooks are available for less. They're, they're lower priced than what you can find out there in the world. For example, um, when, when you let BookBub editors know that you like fantasy, they will then let you know when a new fantasy book is available from, from Sandy Lender for $1.99. So instead of having to go to Barnes and Noble and pay $24 for the print book, you can, hey, look, get the ebook for $1.99. So download that. So that's how BookBub is helping you get digital books either for free or for less, for 99 cents and so on. Number 11 in our digital section is Libby, the Libby app. And Libby is short for library. So this is a library app. And all you need is a library card to your local library and the Libby app. Then you are able to check out eBooks from your local library on your device. Easy, breezy, and free. All right. Number 12 is online writing platforms. I want you to think about Wattpad and Smashwords and Campfire and Substack, okay? These are platforms where authors are writing things. Perhaps they're releasing a chapter each week. Perhaps they're releasing the full complete book, like on Smashwords. A Smashwords is able to, Smashwords, authors are able to upload their eBooks to, you know, Draft2Digital and then Draft2Digital will distribute the ebook through two different platforms like Smashwords and Wattpad and Vivlio. Okay. So these different digital platforms are releasing ebooks. Sometimes they're free. Sometimes they're 99 cents. Okay. They're lesser priced. When you go directly to the author's, like the author's campfire page, you can read what they're writing right there on their campfire page, right there on their Substack stream. You can subscribe to an author's Substack and get to read what they're doing as they're doing it. Or maybe they're going to release the whole book to their Substack audience, okay? You get to read it for free. Sometimes the Substack is set up like a Patreon channel. So you you become a patron of the author. So you pay them like $1.99 a month, like a cup of coffee per month, less than a cup of coffee per month to get first access to their new stuff. Brilliant, easy. Sometimes it's free. Sometimes it's very low priced to get first access to new material digitally from authors directly. Now I know that I have left out a ton of other digital platforms. I mean, there are digital stores obviously where you can get books for lesser prices. I mean, we're thinking, uh, Pengo books, right? Abe books, Barber books, Barbor, however they, however you pronounce Barber books. There are different platforms like that where you can get digital books and print books mailed to you for lesser prices, lesser prices than the big box stores. You guys in the comments below, share some of the digital platforms, some of the digital ebook platforms that I haven't mentioned here in this section. Share the knowledge, share the love. Let's talk about that in the comments below. But please 
be careful. Don't share any pirate sites. If I see any piracy sites down there, I will yeet that from the comments. As an author, I don't like it when people steal authors' material. Um, I don't condone illegal activity. And we're not going to talk about illegal activity in the comments, all right? So um, talk about in the comments below some different platforms where you've seen you know ebooks available at lesser prices or where the authors are offering some really good deals. Now the next section, our final section, we're going to talk about print books. We're going to talk about both free print books and lesser priced print books and where we can find these. So number 13 is the library. Of course the library, right? You can go to your community library check out a book, read it, return it. You can enjoy that book, that print physical book right there in your hand. You guys know how the library works. All right, number 14 is the little free library in your neighborhood. Now, I don't have a little free library in my neighborhood. I've not seen one since I moved in here. And I'm pretty sure that if there was one, it would get knocked over by my neighbors drag racing up and down the streets. So that's, that's not something I get to enjoy. But if you have a little free library in your neighborhood, gee whiz, you can take a book that you have already loved and enjoyed, go there and exchange it for a book that you want to love and enjoy out of that little free library. You guys, that's also a really good way to unhaul some of your books that you've already loved and enjoyed and make room on your shelf for some of these print books that we're talking about bringing into your life, right? Okay, number 15 trading with friends. Okay. Let's say you've got a book that you've already loved and enjoyed and now you're ready to give it away. Well, talk to a friend. Your friend might have a book they've already loved and enjoyed and you can trade. Easy breezy. Number 16, indie publishers sometimes will have a table set up at these conventions and different like creatives events at Comic Con, at Imaginarium in Louisville, right? At these different conventions, the indie publishing houses may have a section of their table that's called like the read and review section. They'll have this on their website too. We'll talk about that in a second. But they'll have a section where you can walk up to the table and see the sign that says read and review. You can take a book. Take it. All they want you to do is read that book and leave a review of it. Now, they're working on the honor system. In this case, right, they're they're giving you this book, hoping that you're going to, you know, take it home, love it, write a review, put that review on Amazon and Goodreads and oh, let's see, BookBub and anywhere else that you like to leave reviews, right? They're wanting you to help them promote that book and that author. Okay, that's the point of them giving away these free books at their table. Now, some uh, some of these indie publishing houses will have a a page on their website set up kind of the same way. Now, in this case, you're probably going to be getting a PDF, you know, an ebook. You're not, they're not going to mail out physical copies of books, probably. Uh, Seven Star Press, um, who did my, my Choices Trilogy, they re-released my Cho Choices Trilogy. They have a page on the Seven Star Press website where you can go in and you can see the books from their stable of authors and you can select one that you would like to read and review. You just request it from them. They send you the ebook or the PDF. They send you a link to the ebook. After you read it, you write a review. You let them know, hey, I reviewed this. Here's where the review is. Now, can I have this book from this author? Okay, that's how that works. Now, I did, I did try that. I think that right now, the folks at Seven Star Press are so overwhelmed. You know, they run Imaginarium, right? They're so overwhelmed that no one is actually monitoring that page right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to it in the information box below once I have confirmation that it's being monitored again. Because see, I, I reached out through the page to request, um, oh, I forgot the title of it, but Rose Marie Machario has a trilogy now in the fantasy genre. And I wanted to read that first book and bring that to you guys here on the channel. I'm recommending that you guys check that out. Okay. Anyway, um, when I reached out to get that book, I, I didn't hear back. And I think it's because they're so overwhelmed right now at that publishing house. When that page is back up and running, I will let you guys know in the information box below. Okay. 
okay. What I'm saying is there are publishing houses that do that sort of thing. They have, they'll have um, like a sign up area where you can sign up to be an ARC reader. And when they have an ARC available from one of their new releases, one of their new authors, they'll send that to you. They'll send you a notice. Hey, the ARCs are available. Here's where you download it. All right. That kind of thing lets you read books for free. And all you have to do is share your opinion after you read it. Easy, breezy, free. All right. Okay. Next, let's talk about these physical books that are not free, but lower cost. All right. I want to talk about this read and return program at the airports. Okay. There are 850 stores in 85 airports across North America that participate in this read and return concept, this read and return program. Okay. The stores are, I wrote it down, the Paradis Lagardère. That's the stores. Okay. You go into one of these stores, you buy a book, you get a receipt. You guys keep the receipt. I mean, we're using these receipts as a bookmark anyway, right? You keep the receipt, you read the book on the plane. And when you get to your destination, you go to another participating store and you say, here's my receipt. Here's my book. I read this. I want to return it. They give you 50% of your money back. You have 50% of your money back. Or you could use that 50% of your money toward the purchase of another book. You get another book. Nice. Now, of course, you do have to outlay cash at the outset. You do have to buy a book to begin. And it's full price. But you're getting 50% of your money back when you're done reading the book. So you get to read this book for half price. I think that's a win. In my book, that's a win. And that's a nice thing. Um, I will put a link to an article that talks about that and talks about where these bookstores are in the information box below. All right, now let's talk about thrift stores. Number 18, thrift stores. If you go into Goodwill, they're gonna have a book section. Any of these, you know, <laughs> Any of these thrift stores in your community, they're going to have a, a table with books, bookshelves with books that have been pre-loved and turned in. You guys, you can probably find some real gems in there, right? You're probably going to find some classics in there. You're going to find some books that will be new to you in that section. Check it out. It's check it out. Okay. They're going to be at lower prices than what you would find at the big bookstores like Barnes and Noble. And number 19 is those big bookstores like Barnes and Noble. OK, let's talk about that, because for number 19, you can go into Barnes and Noble or Waterstones or Books a Million. You can go into these stores and go to the clearance table. You guys are going to have clearance tables set up with books that are priced lower than those other books in the rest of the store. OK, you can go to the clearance table and get a book for $5.99 for $2.99. You can go nuts at those clearance tables, so be careful. But you're going to find clearance tables in those stores, or you can find some. You can find some gems in there. You can, and and not just not just the big bookstores, but bookstores like little hole in the wall bookstores in your hometown. I want to mention for you an article that's in the current issue of O Reader. This is issue 17. Let us turn to this page together. This is the article, Much More Than Bargain Books. And this is by Laura Strout. And she's actually a Floridian like me. Okay, she writes in here about um, refinding her love of reading for herself by going to a, a little bargain bookstore in her neck of the woods down here in Florida. And one of the things she talks about is how the, the bookstore owner um, was, you know, always helping her find books for her, for her son, for her kid. And then one day was like, well, what do you like to read? And, you know, Laura's response was, well, you know, I don't really have a lot of time to read, looking for stuff for my kid. And the bookstore owner one day handed her a book. It was a thriller and said, why don't you give this a try? Didn't ask her to buy it. Just said, I've read this. I enjoyed it. Why don't you give it a try? See what you think. And Laura read it and loved it, gobbled it up and was like, 
eager to get back to the store to talk to the bookstore owner about the book. She wanted to get back and talk about it. And it rekindled her love for reading. She wanted to try out some more thriller stories. OK, and she writes here, a simple act of kindness helped me see myself there in the store, kind of lost and in mom fog. It also opened up the entire store to me considering that I used to skip whole genres of books that I hadn't thought would interest me. So I took more of the store owner's recommendations and got to reading. And she skips down a little further and says, now when I am at the store, surrounded by its ever-changing collection of books, I feel like I am surrounded by old friends as well as new potential. Okay, so she's going into these this bargain bookstore more frequently now. And when she goes in there, she is surrounded by a changing catalog of books. So I want you to think about those clearance tables at the big bookstores, those, those shelves at the bargain bookstores. And, you know, like we talked about in number 18, think about those thrift store shelves as an ever changing catalog, an ever changing opportunity to find books that are at lesser prices than, than the rest of those big bookstores. Okay. All right now, you guys, we're 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 up to the last item in our twenty ways to get more books into your life when you're on a tight budget. This is number twenty, and number twenty is sometimes purchasing directly from the author is less pricey than purchasing online or purchasing at the bookstore or purchasing even from the publisher. Sometimes it is less pricey to go directly to the author. If you're at an author event or if you're at a convention, if you're at Comic-Con, if you're at um, you know, Imaginarium, if you're at Conjuration, if you're at the, um, the Sunshine State Book Festival, if you go to one of these events and you walk up to the author at their table, the author is probably going to have that book priced less expensively than it is online. Here's why. The author is able to purchase that book at the author's price. Okay. When I purchase my choices, trilogy books, I can purchase them at the author's price. I don't have to pay. The first book in the trilogy is larger than the other two, a little bit larger. So it is like $24.99 on amazon.com. This is not supposed to be a commercial. Okay, guys, I'm just, I'm just telling you it's like $24.99 on amazon.com. I would have to go to amazon.com and be $24.99 plus shipping to get it to me. Ugh. But if I can order it from the publisher directly, I don't have to pay that much. Then when I go to an author event, when I go to the Sunshine State Book Festival, I don't have to charge $24.99 to make my money back. I do have to pay, charge enough for you know the table and my travel up there, but I don't have to pay. I don't have to charge all that. I don't have to charge that much. I can charge $22 and still make back my fee plus enough for the table. You get the point, right? So you can come to up to me at a table and pay $22 instead of $24.99 plus shipping. Makes sense? You're tracking with me here, right? Okay. Also, if you go up to the author at their table at an event, sometimes they will have, um, they will have had the opportunity to purchase their books at even less than that. For example, I have found amazon.com sometimes will do crazy things and put things on sale even less than what I could have purchased at my author price. I use um, lulu.com for my self-published titles. You still have to pay an author price for those things that's not cheap. And once in a while, Amazon will have one of my self-published titles less than my author price. You better believe I'm going to snag a couple of those. And I have done that before. Then I am able to put that price down further when I'm at a table. That makes it easier for the person walking up to my table to say yes to buying that book. And you better believe I'm going to make it as easy for you to say yes as possible. Because I want you to buy the book. I want you to read it. I want you to love it. I want you to leave a review. Okay. So sometimes purchasing from the author at an author event is less expensive than purchasing online. You guys. In the comments below, please leave some of your ideas for how you find print books for free or at less pricey prices. Let's talk about that in the comments below as well. Those are the top 20 ways to get more books into your life 
while you're on a tight budget. But you guys, would I leave you with just 20 ways? No, of course not. There is a bonus way. There is a bonus way that you can get more books into your life. And that is by following an author, by subscribing to an author's newsletter. Of course, I'm going to suggest you should subscribe to the Sandy Says Read newsletter, of course, because once in a while, I'll have a contest in there where you can win a book and I will send you a free ebook or a free PDF. Um, there are authors every once in a while. I'll have an arc that I can send to people. I'm, I'm not as good about that as I should be, but many, many authors in their author newsletters will have advanced reader copies and notice about advanced reader copies that are available. What they're doing is they're letting their audience know first. They're letting their audience have first dibs at reading that copy, reading that manuscript. And all you have to do is give your opinion. What they're looking for is, hey, do you like it? You know, give me a blurb, give me a testimonial, leave a review somewhere on Amazon or Goodreads or BookBub or wherever you like to leave reviews. That's all we want. We're, we're giving away books. We're giving away manuscripts with those newsletters more frequently than you can imagine. Okay. We're giving away books because that's the only currency we have. <laughs> the, the books are our currency and yeah, we're using it. We're using it liberally. So you guys, um, are there any author newsletters you already subscribe to? I mean, which ones? Tell us in the comments below. Which author newsletters do you already subscribe to? And do you actually read? I mean, which ones are you taking the time to read? Which ones are you enjoying? And have you ever won a book from an author or an author newsletter or an author event? I mean, have you ever won a book from an author? That, that's cool. Let us know that, yes, it's a fact. It does happen. It's a, it's a truism. It happens. It's good. All right. I think we have gone over everything that we needed to go over. You guys, that is the top 20 ways to read more books while you're on a tight budget. Um, I do want to make it clear that all of these different things that we've discussed, all these different platforms and services and, and stores and things, none of them asked me to talk about them. None of them sponsored this video. I'm, I'm not a big channel, you guys. No, I'm not highfalutin. Nobody asked me to, to mention them in this video. I am my own sponsor. You guys, I do have a merch shop and I will put a link to that in the information box below. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thumbs up for getting more books into our lives and I will see you in the next video.